welcome to the Father's Day. I'm Jesse Lee Peterson. Thank you all for being with me. And don't forget, you can support the Father's Day by going to thefatherstate.tv slash donate and also on locals.com, all right? Click the link in the description. You'll see locals.com there. And thank you in advance. I do appreciate it. I have with me Rhonda Dixon, and she is an attorney and founder of the Dixon Justice Center and currently running for L.A. County Superior Court. Rhonda, thank you for coming. Thank you. I thank totally you appreciate me. it. Um, just to get to know you better, are you a Christian? No. You're not a Christian? I'm a Buddhist. You're a Buddhist? Yes. Oh, interesting. Mm -hmm. And just for the record, you are black. I am, yes. She's black. Both and she's of my Buddhist. parents. <laughs> Both <laughs> of my parents are black. And what made you just, were you ever a Christian? I was at one point. And what made you decide to go Buddhist? Um, I read the Bible cover to cover. And I found some anomalies in what it said and what people said it said, but it didn't say. Uh, so I had to read it again. And then I decided that I didn't uh, agree with it. Amazing. Oh, in the Bible. Mm -hmm. Oh, some things in the Bible you did not agree with. No. And so you decided to become a Buddhist. At every, can you think of one example of something you didn't agree with in the Bible? If you can. Yes. Um, in the book of Numbers, Deuteronomy, and Joshua, it talks about um, that that Yahweh is a jealous, bloodthirsty, and angry God, and that, you know, thou shalt have no gods before me. So then at that point, it, he tells them that they can go into cities and kill people and just take over if they're not believers. And um, I just don't support that. There's never been a war fought in the name of Buddhism, and I just don't support that type of behavior. Oh, I got you. And wh one thing about Buddhists you like that attracted you, Buddhists? Um, the concept that we're all kind of emanations of God in our own right and that we have to strive to, make, to reach our highest human potential. And um, I was already doing that, and that's what I think everyone should be doing. And uh, no fighting, you know, everything is peaceful, conflict, and the Buddha is peaceful. Right. And that's what I like, so that's what I gravitated towards. And so, uh, so you do the Buddhist meditation thing? I do. I chant Nam Myoho Renge Kyo. Oh, you do? Yes. Tina Turner used to do that. Yes, she did. When I she was getting beat up by her husband. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Finally, she got away from that. Using yeah, she her did. Nam Myoho Renge Kyo, and she created her peaceful state. Right on. And so what does that do for you, Nam Myoho Kyo? Nam Myoho Renge Kyo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what it does is, is creates uh, peacefulness and harmony in your environment. It focuses you, and it actually makes you look younger. Because I'm 62, and they say when you start chanting, you lose 10 years off of your face right away. Plus, black don't crack, so that That's helps true. too. That's true. Amazing. So you have perfect peace now? It's not always perfect. It's always a state of flux, but um, mostly peace, yes. Do you believe it possible to have perfect peace? I don't know about that because everything is always changing. You know, one of the Buddhist concepts is that change is, is a part of the process. So you have to always be aware of the change, you know, and right. adapting to it. So I don't necessarily think so. I think you always have to adjust. Oh, I see. Is it possible on the Buddhist religion, when you said you're reaching your highest- Human potential, yes. Potential, human potential. Mm -hmm. So what's your highest human potential? To become Buddha and basically to become in that peaceful state where you can transform your own environment to make it the Buddha, we call it the Buddha's pure land. So when you come into that environment, it creates this peacefulness. Amazing. Mm -hmm. So is Buddha that little fat guy that I be seeing in the <laughs> Japanese restaurants and everywhere? No. That's, that's not him? No, that's Amitabha Buddha. So there's different sex of Buddhism. The actual oh. Buddha was known for being really skinny because he actually um, starved himself for 40 days and 40 nights. Nice. And he was very thin. Yeah. He um, was actually also dark complected. When you see uh, pictures of him, he'll be dark complected with braids and um, the people next to him will be like a medium brown. Oh yeah? Yeah, so the original Buddha was definitely black. So there are more than one Buddhist? You know, it's like everybody wants to create God in their own um, likeness. Yes. And so as Buddha changes and moves from India to China, 
he becomes Chinese looking, and when he becomes uh, when he goes to Japan, he becomes Japanese looking. So, people always recreate God, just like Jesus Christ. The original Jesus Christ had to be black. His description is that he was black, but yet when he goes to Europe, then Jesus Christ becomes white. Oh, so Jesus was black originally. It says so in the Bible. There's a description of him. Did he have good hair or nappy hair? I think it was kind of curly. They said he was bronze with woolly hair. Well, then he must have been white then if he had good hair. What's up? <laughs> Not necessarily. <laughs> there's a, remember when I told you I went to Egypt, there's people in <laughs> Egypt that have good hair. Right. or curly hair oh. that are not mixed. They're just uh, like in Aswan, when you go farther down into, um, it's about four hours south of Cairo. Oh, okay, nice. Mm -hmm. uh, have you ever been to Israel? I have not. Rhonda, before you die, if you want to get into heaven, you got to go to Israel. Well, I'll go to Israel, but I believe that heaven is on earth. Heaven is a state of mind. Right. A state well, of being. Go to Israel in that state of mind. It's beautiful. <laughs> okay, I will. It's when amazing. they're not fighting and having a war. Yeah, that's, once that's over, mm -hmm. that's over. It'll be amazing. Yeah. They even have some of the original, real original black, Christ, black uh, Jews mm -hmm. in Israel. Mm -hmm. And they don't look like us. Mm -hmm. And they don't even like us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they're black. I'm like, what the... But yeah, you got to go to Israel. Mm -hmm. um, um, do you have anger? Do I have anger? Sometimes I do. You do have anger. Mm -hmm. And will you ever overcome anger completely? Well, remember in the, they talk about righteous anger. Um, in the Bible. Yes. But you ain't into the Bible no more. No, but... Um, even the Buddha, anger is, um, is also a state of mind or a state of being. And you yeah. can always use any of your state of minds to create the world of Buddha. I mean, there's this concept of the ten worlds. And so within every one of those worlds, one of which is anger, there's a world of Buddha. So you can change, we call it changing um, lemons into lemonade, you know, making something positive out of something negative. So you can use the world of anger to be But positive. anger is evil. There's no love in anger at all. It destroys and not mm -hmm. builds. We would even consider anger to be arrogance, you know, certain... Because you know, arrogance is evil too. It's a too. form of anger, yes. Right, it's ego, mm -hmm. right? So you got to let that anger go if you want to reach your highest potential. Yes, true. That Do you want true. to overcome that? You believe that you can overcome anger? Yes. Oh, you do? Mm -hmm. And so, do you know how to overcome it? By chanting. Who? By chanting Nam Myoho Renge Kyo. No, they ain't gonna do it. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you how before we leave the show today. Okay, tell me. But we'll get to it. What's important to you? What's important to me? Um, you know, I, I always, I really like to help people. And, um, I want to leave the world better than I found it. I want yeah. to really help to resolve conflicts. And that's one of the reasons why I decided to run for judge. I mean, one of the reasons we become lawyers is because we're supposed to be helping people peacefully resolve conflicts. Yeah. Prior to lawyers, they just took 10 paces, turned around and shoot people. That's how they decided to resolve conflicts back in the day and then also to start wars. You know, wars are just a disagreement that becomes violent. Yeah, absolutely. And speaking of you wanting to help people, I read where you, you've been doing a lot of, over the years, you've been doing a lot of work in the black community. You started a, what's the name of the organization you started? It was called Dixon Recovery Institute. Yeah, Dixon Recovery Institute. Yes. And you were working with drug addicts and alcoholics and things like that. Yes. What were you doing exactly? Counseling them, helping them to put their lives back together. Um, referring them to housing, referring them to jobs, but once once they get clean from the drugs, and it's a huge, huge problem in our community. Yeah. It's, and why is it so major, uh, such a major deal in the black community? I believe, I believe that there were some incidents where drugs were brought into our community to undermine, you know, people. I mean, you do remember the story of. Um, Freeway Ricky Ross and um, yeah, I all that Killer then. Messenger and all that stuff. Yeah. Um, it, that really did happen. You know, they did bring drugs into the community. And um, historically, they say if you don't watch, uh, if you don't pay attention to history, it repeats itself. Right, I heard that. So 
remember in history there was something called the Chinese exclusionary rule, and what they did was they brought opium from India, that's the British, they brought opium from their British colony in India to put it over into their Chinese colony, or actually to colonize China. And they used the, um, the opium to do that. And I believe they did the same thing in our communities. And so what was wrong with the blacks? Let's say that that's true, that the white man brought the drug in, right? Mm -hmm. Let's pretend it's true, because we know it's not, but let's pretend. I don't know that. Um, what was wrong with the blacks that they took the drug? Because the white man didn't make them take it, right? No, they made it available. So they so took away a lot of opportunity. So what was wrong with the blacks that they took it? I think the, the lack of opportunity, the lack of um, advancement, the lack of good, and jo good jobs and things like that. It was just a lot of despair in our community. But it was just mostly blacks in the black community. What was wrong with them that they didn't create opportunity? Just like the white man could do it, the Mexican does it, the Chinese, everyone does it but the blacks. What's wrong with the blacks that they can't create their own opportunity? I, I think that historically blacks have created their own opportunities and it's been like basically like whack-a-mole. Every time they create something, it gets dismantled by different systems that are, uh, like for instance, redlining. Um, redlining has made it hard for black people to get homes and get loans. Um, there are certain things that have been done to create this socioeconomic disparity. But if, if the blacks were to pay their bills, you and I know that blacks don't pay back. Well, you know what I mean? When I, I took a course if at the Harvard. If blacks and paid their bills, would they need red line? Or would the bank have to say, you know what? I, we're not going to let this group of people have money because they don't pay back. We don't even do like you know to when red lining loan started? to black people, right? Do you know when red lining started? Yeah. When? When they, re when they realized that the black wasn't going to pay back. <laughs> You know, I have a PhD in MSU, it's called Making Stuff Up. <laughs> no, it was basically the federal government started it in the 1920s, and um, that's the reason why they said that Woodrow Wilson was a racist, because one of the policies he started was the redlining policy. It stopped a lot of um, black men that had served in the military from being able to get homes that were given freely to white servicemen. They created the, that's when they created the suburbs. So there was different housing tracks that they created where they literally gave, not just the VA loan, they just gave those homes outright to people as a thank you to their service. And black servicemen sued. That's another, you know, this is, a, this is documented. They sued and lost, but they found out through that process that they had this thing called redlining and that they weren't allowed to participate in those programs. But let's say that that's true, and I don't know if it is or not, but what's wrong with the blacks? They can't recover. You know, like years have gone by, right? And they're still complaining about the past. Like, other people tend, tend to recover. The mm -hmm. Jews recovered, the whites recovered from white-on-white -white slavery, mm -hmm. the Japanese, everybody seemed to recover but the blacks. What's wrong with the blacks? They can't recover. I can talk about being, uh, basically the penal system. You know, slavery was never abolished in California, in, in, not in California, in the United it States. It was never in California anyway. They were never Actually, it was, slavery but in I'm not gonna, I'm, I'm not gonna go into that too much, but I will say that um, based on mass incarceration, the 14th Amendment said that slavery was abolished except for penal servitude which means it was never actually abolished because to the extent that they can put 80% of the prisoners in the state of California happen to be black, and we don't represent that much of the population on a good day, 7%, and that's only in urban population areas, there's some kind of severe disparity there. If the blacks did not commit the crime, would they have gone to jail? You know, I was just reading an article of today, and they did a study in Pasadena of the disparity between how many people they arrest that are black as opposed to other ethnic groups. So it does have to do with this concentration on a certain group. But if they had not committed the crime, would they still go I'm, to jail? I'm not sure that they're even committing crimes. I mean, sometimes they go it's to jail just, for no reason at all? Some people are, unfortunately. Well, uh, yeah. Some of my clients I know aren't guilty. Some of them are. Some none of them, of them are. are. No, not I none of them. I deal with not jail none of them. stuff, and Some nobody are. in the jail guilty. <laughs> <No, that's... laughs> they all tell me right away, <laughs> I'm not guilty. 
<laughs> I didn't do it. I'm like, yes, you did. You lying. Mm, some of my clients, they'll say they did it, but maybe they don't deserve to go to jail for 20 years and nobody got hurt, killed, or anything like that. But how can a criminal decide how long they're going to be in jail? They don't. I'm just saying that the judge actually decides. All right. And sometimes the decision, right now we have 20,000 people that are waiting for resentencing because we decided as a state that some of these laws were too, too draconian, that the sentences were too high. Um, I, I grew up in Alabama mm -hmm. under Jim Crow law and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And prior to the Jim Crow law, there was no, I mean, that was the Jim Crow law, but there was no NAACP. I mean, not mm -hmm. NAACP, but what's that thing Martin Luther King did? Yes. Civil rights movement. Yes. There was no civil rights movement, none of that, right? And the blacks were free. Yes. They had families. They worked hard. They owned land. They educated themselves. They had trades. Mm -hmm. And they treated white people the way they would like to be treated. And mm -hmm. the white people treated them the way they would like to be treated. And they had no leadership or anything. God was over the family, the father over the wife and children, right? Mm -hmm. And it was amazing. And the blacks were doing very well. Then the civil rights movement came along, and they said to the black, oh, the white man don't like y'all. Y'all enslaved, and y'all need leaders. Y'all need to stop thinking for yourself and let us be your leaders. Mm -hmm. And so the blacks deci decided that, okay, I'm going to stop letting God lead me. I'm going to stop letting the family lead me. I'm going to let y'all lead us. And Martin Luther King and all the people sold the blacks over to the Democratic Party so that they could be the leaders and they sold the blacks and the Democrats for a welfare check and so they could be leaders. And they put this, the civil rights movement, put the father, the black father on the back burner and they made the woman God by telling her, you can have a welfare check, have a bunch of babies. The more babies, the more welfare, you don't need the man. And the blacks have been downhill ever since. Was it a mistake for the blacks to listen to the, the so-called civil rights movement, the leaders, but kept their independence and just lived their lives? Was it a mistake to do that? It seemed like, the, well, not seemed like, the civil rights movement was the worst thing that ever happened to the blacks other than abortion. Was it a mistake for the blacks to put the so-called civil rights leaders over them? Well, I guess you're saying basically it's like kicking a beehive because they kicked the beehive and then the bees came out. Um, Meaning that the, the so-called black leaders came out? No, the, um, the white racism came out once they got but kicked. But the blacks were doing so much better prior to that. Well, actually and not. And I'm a witness to it. I was born in 1961, so oh, I was a young. witness to a lot of this too. But I think that... Um, in urban areas, you mentioned being in more rural areas, but in urba, urban areas, black people were not treated so fairly. Um, there was a woman named Dr. Frances Cress Welsing that made the, um, she had a book called The Keys to the Colors, and she talked about the fact that a lot of black people were severely depressed, and that might be why they were also self-medicating with drugs, but they were severely depressed because it wasn't a meritocracy. Once they realized that no matter how hard they worked, they were not going to get the job. They were not going to get the promotion. They were not going to get the raise because of r discrimination. I wouldn't trust her then. She's not being honest. No, it's, because she said Because even that, in Montgomery, Alabama, I have family there, grew mm -hmm. up there, and I used to go there a lot. Black people were working. They, uh, there were black businesses. Matter of fact, there were black-owned bus companies. Mm -hmm. And... and the black prefer to take the white man bus over the black man bus because you know we don't like one another, right? <laughs> no. We think the white man do it. I does think. It I think. And so the blacks refused, but when they had the bus boycott, mm -hmm. <clears throat> the blacks still didn't take the white the black man bus. So the black company went out of business too, because the black people would not support it. But the blacks were working; they were uh, doing all kind of work. So little, little friends and Martha Risa person, not telling you the truth. Oh, because I was there. Her name was Dr. Frances Cress Welsing. Um, she um, just made an observation that a lot of people in urban areas, this wasn't rural areas, this was urban areas, this was in but Detroit. But I'm talking about urban areas. This was in Detroit. Yeah. And in Detroit, a lot of people were profoundly depressed when they realized they were not going to get the raise, the promotion, whatever, because they were black. And that has been a systematic um, type of racism and, and socioeconomic depression. Well, see, that's not depression. true either. 
because mm -hmm. I know family members and others who moved to Detroit. Mm -hmm. And they, because they have been taught growing up to work for themselves, not mm -hmm. to be ang angry at their fellow man, which is hatred, not to judge people, but live your life and love what's right. They bought homes. They went from Alabama to Detroit and Chicago, and they bought homes. They had big families. The mother stayed home and raised the children. The father took care. In my family, there was like nine, mm -hmm. and my mother never worked mm -hmm. until everybody was grown and gone. And, my, and uh, her uh, husband, stepfather, my stepfather died. But they did well because they were trained that way. They were raised that way. They didn't go up there to Detroit. The only reason they left Detroit is when the blacks took over and Detroit became a hellhole. And they, be, they were robbed and stealing. The blacks were breaking into their mm -hmm. homes and robbing them. So a lot of them moved back to the South. So, so she's not being honest about that either. I think it coincides with the downfall of the um, General Motors and all of the automotive industries, a lot of the industries that brought blacks there from the South in the first place, you know. Uh, there's a book called uh, um, The Warmth of Other Suns, where they talk, she talks about the migration, the great migration of many black people from the Southern states to the blacks, to the Northern states, to take advantage of factory jobs and things like that. That happened in Indiana, in yeah, Detroit, Chicago, a lot of my Buffalo, New program. York, um, and uh, it happened a lot. And my family actually migrated from Sparta, Illinois, which is outside of Chicago, to on my father's side. Then they'd go to Wyoming. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why Rock Springs, Wyoming. There was only two <laughs> black families, and that Amazing. was the entire population of Rock Springs, Wyoming. But it was because my Great grandfather, well, actually, he was my grandfather. He was a coal miner in nice. Kentucky. And he moves to uh, Wyoming because they were strip mining coal there. So he was just following that job. And then after that, he comes to, um, like a lot of other black families, they came to Los Angeles because there were a lot of jobs during World War II. Yeah. I worked for Endless Steel for one, two weeks to make a paycheck. I left mm -hmm. Alabama. Mm -hmm. uh, went to Inland Steel, uh, Indiana, got a job at Inland Steel, made a paycheck and moved here. Mm -hmm. So uh, I understand that. Um, you have decided to, you're going to run for L.A. County uh, courts. First, you were, you're a lawyer first, yes. right? Yes, yes. Did you get, did you become a lawyer based on affirmative action or did you earn your way? I earned my way. And how would we know that? since we know that blacks get in because of affirmative action, reparation, and all that, and then they lower the standard to let the blacks in. <laughs> That's not true. How will we know that you <laughs> earn it rather than getting it with the lower standard right. thing? Because I never checked the box, number one. No. Right. And I actually wrote um, a, a thesis on that in order, uh, saying that I didn't want to check the box because I wanted it to be a meritocracy. But... Um, whether you check the box or not, I think, I don't know that the box helps. I think we have to work twice as hard to get half as far. And as, what's wrong with that? I, it's nothing wrong with that. I've yeah. always applied that. But right the on. issue is that there's people that don't deserve to be where they are because they don't work that hard. And they and obviously just And why is it that the blacks that? don't work that hard and as a result they don't deserve to be there? I'm not talking about blacks. What are you talking about? I'm talking about people that aren't black that may not work as hard to get the same opportunities that we might be denied or that we like have who? to work twice as the hard Mexicans? for. Yeah, they're pretty lazy. I'm not talking to people the lazy. Other, the other one. <laughs> I'm not calling people lazy. No, that's on you. <laughs> but I agree with you. Like, they all let a lot of Mexicans in, too. Especially they with are. the illegal alien one. They don't. They, they don't pretty deserve. much replaced us in jobs for the most part. They'll say that they are meeting their minority quota. Right. Yes. What do you think about the fact that black people vote for black people, right? And then the black people that they are voting for are in support of the illegal aliens coming in and ended up in the inner cities taking the jobs from the blacks and bringing in gang members or black gangs or messing gangs or fighting one another. What do you say for those blacks who support illegal aliens coming into the country? Well, you know, as a judge, I have to be nonpartisan, so I can't give oh, my yeah. opinions on things all That's the time. That's right. We got to get you voted in first. Yeah. So I can't give my opinion on. Okay, things. I understand that. She doesn't have an opinion about that. She likes everybody. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I do. I'm a Buddhist. I'm one with everyone. That's right. <laughs> um, 
where am I wrong in this? Women were created to follow and not to lead. Ooh. Why would, why and how <laughs> would I vote for a woman in, into a leadership role knowing that it's not in her nature to lead? Why would I vote for that knowing that it's not going to work out because it's not in her nature? Do I would you agree? totally disagree with that because, first of all, the whole biblical story about the rib, a lot of people know this, that Adam had a first wife named Lilith, and she's the goddess of wisdom. And she left him because he didn't want to um, let her lead. So that's when Yahweh created the second wife, which was Eve, which was supposedly made from a rib out of Adam. I mean, it's not even possible, but this was just a parable to support the patriarchy. In point of fact, in all ancient religions and ancient times, they had women that were the wise advisors to men. Case in point, Morgaine with the King Arthur, um, Medusa was a woman and she was a wise oracle. The fates were women and they were all oracles. So no, I disagree emphatically. And even in the Egyptian times, many of the women were pharaohs. They were actually the rulers. And if they weren't, then they were the queen regent that advised the little boy king, like King Tut Hathor was the one advising him. He was not the king. He couldn't do it by himself. He ascended to the throne when he was like 13. He died when he was 19. Where did you get this idea that Adam had a wife before Eve? Um, it's, if you, if you ask a Jewish person, it's in the Kabbalah, but if you, and they know about Lilith. Lilith was the goddess of wisdom, but it's not something I made up. There's a book by Merlin Stone called When God Was a Woman, and God was a woman in every single religion on the planet up until 3,000 years ago. And if God gave, made a woman before Adam, before Eve, why did, why did we hear about that before they started pushing this woman movement and trying to pretend that the woman is created to lead and equal to a man. Why did we hear about that before all this mess started? Because it was propaganda by the patriarchy. By the women? No, by the patriarchy. In order to support this whole male-dominated society, there needs to be balance. That's what I'm... I stand for balance, even balance on the bench. We need to have more people represented, more diversity represented. We need to have the people that are judges look like the people that are on the other side of the bench. But in reality, and I understand they're trying to make the woman appear that she's equal to the man and that she can lead and all that. And we know it's not true, but... No, of course it pretend. is true. I'm doing it every day. What are you talking but about? But let's pretend. <laughs> 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 um, now that they allow women to get, because if men didn't allow, it wouldn't happen, but they allow <laughs> women to get into these leadership roles. Okay. Have you noticed how screwed up things are? We now have transgender, we now have cutting You're our body that parts. On women? That's yeah. men that want to be women. Right, but, that has nothing but, to do with women. That has to do with them. But men would envy. not never approve of that. And the that women has to do with they, them envying what we have and wanting and biologically not having that and then wanting to... Or even just they say they were born that way. But there are women putting on men body they cutting off their and putting on men body part too. What's wrong with them? <laughs> I think that uh -huh. everyone <laughs> I think that everyone um, they have so what we are biologically can change through time. I mean our hormonal balance changes, you know. But you're still gonna be a male or a female. You may take off the body part. But inwardly, you're still a male or female. Well, that doesn't change. Maybe that maybe it's the other way around. Inwardly, you might want to be this person that outwardly you're not showing, so they want to make that match by taking off body parts or adding body parts. That doesn't make sense, though. Well, in the in the Indian tradition, I mean, indigenous people, they actually had different designations. They had uh, I, I actually when I worked in West Hollywood, I met a person who was an attorney, who said he he was well. They were a twin soul, that they were born with both, um, diff both spirits in their body, a male and a female. I believe that's probably because that's what Eva does. Uh, Eva spirits make a home in human beings. Evil? Yeah. Oh my goodness, <laughs> evil. But but uh, but I know homophobies too. Yes. I know that there, there are, are men and are women born who are born way. abnormal. With both, I don't know if that's part. abnormal. It's a defect. They say that at least, uh, at one point I read that there was at least two people in a hundred.
that were born as a hermaphrodite. But it was also a defect, though. But I want to go back to the Adam That's and Eve That's a judgment, thing. though. That means if you, you believe in God, so why would God make something imperfect? God didn't do that. Most of the time, when that, maybe 100% of the time when that happens, it's because the woman is angry during pregnancy. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> and she's either mad at the husband, or the daddy, or the baby. <sighs> or she haven't forgiven her mother or father. Now, what do so you have to support angry. this theory? I'm sorry? I mean, this is just something you came up with? No. I've never heard this before. Yeah. Because women don't understand that anger is evil. And when they're pregnant, their spirit is evil. Well, maybe men shouldn't make them angry when they're pregnant. What do you mean? Why would they be angry? Because they become like their mothers. They hate their mothers. And they're yearning for their fathers. No. Yeah. I think that's that Sigmund Freud All human syndrome. beings hate their mothers. That's I don't why think they, they did born. until Sigmund Freud started that. <coughs> Who? Sigmund Freud, Who? blaming everything on the mother. Sigmund Freud? Yes. Where's Sigmund Freud now? He's dead. I rest goodness. my case. Well, everybody, no one's living forever. Are you going to be the one that's immortal first? I'm never dying. Okay. I may leave my body, but I'm not dying. Then you're a Buddhist. No, I'm not. That's what Buddhists believe. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. Buddha believe in anger too. No, Buddhists believe that when you die, you will be transformed, and you will either go into another body or into another existence based on what you know on your state of enlightenment when but you die. But God believe in God says that you can overcome anger, which is evil. Apparently, Buddhists do not believe that. Yes, we do. But then, why don't you overcome your anger? It's always a state of flux. I can't, I'm, I'm being honest with you to say that I haven't 100% rec um, can, well, actually, I can't say that. I do believe that I've controlled my anger, but no, I can you, transform but it. But you can't control it, you have to overcome it. It's a spirit and mm, it's evil. It's a transformation. Want me to tell you how to overcome it? Since how? we're there again, you gotta forgive your mother. I forgive my your mother. Your mother imposed her will on you, and she lived through you, and she hated your father. And, and she recreated your, her image by making you angry, passing that spirit on to you, <laughs> and that's why you're just like her. You're not yourself. But I if you am forgive not her, angry. You're trying to make me angry, <clears throat> but I'm not angry. No, I'm not. <laughs> you can't make a person angry when they don't have it in them, right? But if you forgive your mother, God will forgive you, and he'll take the spirit of the anger of your mother away from you and give you back yourself. I've always had myself. You always have your true self. But why haven't you forgiven her? Who says I haven't? That's something you said. H have you forgiven your mother? Yes. And you told her that? Yes. You told your mother, I'm sorry for resenting you? Yes. Oh, good. I love my mother. And have you forgiven your father for not protecting you from your mother? You know, it might be the other way around. Meaning what? It might be forgiving my mother for not protecting me from my father. But have you forgiven your father for not protecting you from her? I can't say that my father didn't protect me from my mother. I didn't, there was nothing to protect me from. If there was nothing to protect you from concerning your mother, why did you have to forgive her? You made that statement. What? That I had to forgive my mother. You said you That's forgave an assumption. her, right? You know what? This is sort of like in court when you say you assume facts, not in evidence. But you did say you forgave your mother. You went and forgave her, right? Because no one's perfect. Everyone makes mistakes. Every parent makes mistakes. And every child resents their parent because of the perceived, the, <clears throat> when they realize that their parent isn't perfect. We all want our parents to be perfect. Right. And to be honest, there was a TED talk that I saw one time and basically said that your mother is to you God when, when you're born because they are your universe. When a, a baby, the only person they really, really are bonded with in the, in the beginning is their mom. And so that's their whole world up until a certain point in time. And so why didn't you forgive your father for not protecting you? Because he loved you. It's just that he did not know how to handle the hell in her because you end up marrying a woman that's just like your mama and the woman end up marrying a man that's just like uh, her father, weak, right? And you, you well, end up attracted to what you hate. So why haven't you forgiven your father for not protecting you from your mother? Because fathers love their children. When they leave, they leave the mother and not the children. But the mother made the children because she's evil. She made the children think the father left them. She doesn't say, you know what? Your father love you. It's just that he can handle me. I'm my just like his mama. Fa my father never left me. He stayed there? 
Yes. And why haven't you forgiven him for not protecting you from her if he were there? I, there's nothing for me to forgive him for. I've forgiven my father for anything that he's I ever can't done. Hear you. I've forgiven my father for anything he's ever done, but you know, everybody so you makes mistakes. Right, that's right. Nobody that's why is we, perfect. And that's why we must forgive. Mm -hmm. um, why isn't that message loud and clear in, in black people? Because black people are not suffering due to an outside event or anything. They are angry and unhappy and suicidal and depressed and all that because they resent their mothers and they need to forgive their mother for recreating them in their image and her in the mother's image and return to their fathers instead of telling the blacks and I don't know if you're doing that or not but most blacks do instead of telling the blacks it's the white man or it's racism or that why don't they tell them to forgive their mothers for turning them against their father because all blacks are angry at their mothers why, why isn't that the loudest message? I actually don't agree with that statement. What statement? That all blacks are in, angry with their mothers well, or that the father was weak or that the mother told the father to hate. Well, why do I they act like their mothers that. They, they, they easily get angry. They snap really fast. They're insecure. They're emotional. Well, if I they're mean, not are you like their, their, their mother, why do they act like their mothers? I, you know, I can't speak to that because I, that's not my experience. I'm sorry? I cannot speak to that because it isn't my experience. But you said you had to forgive your mother too. I think that, like I said, everyone makes mistakes and um, I don't, you, you mentioned that about forgiving my mother, but I'm not like blaming her for anything. <laughs> right, you know? but, I mean, she's probably the reason her. I became a lawyer, my I'm mom. I'm sorry to hear that. Why? <laughs> Why? <laughs> <clears throat> that is not love. And now, a word from our sponsor. Are you married? <laughs> I am not. You never been married? I have never been married. Really? You yeah. want to get married? I don't know. You want children? I have a child. Oh, you do? Okay. Yes. Um, <clears throat> but why isn't the message of forgiving your mother primary in the black community rather than blaming some outer source, racism and all the ism things? Why isn't the message forgive your black mama for screwing you up? Dang, I really don't agree with that. That they should forgive their mothers? No, I don't believe that the black mother screwed them up. Well, who, if the mother didn't do it, who did it? I think society did it through no, racism. No, society you wasn't there when they You don't agree with me, but racism is, is there's socio social, economic, and criminal justice. And what I see is a lot of injustices happening across the board. We would not have this much litigation if it wasn't for that, that racial disparities. There's employment litigation. There's... There's litigation across the board, and a lot of it has to do with economic discrimination. But black people treat each other worse than any white man has ever, could ever, is going to ever, ain't going to ever, never, never treat them. Why are black people so cruel to one another if it's injustice out there? Well, I'm not sure that they are, but the issue they're is They're killing that each other, they're robbing each other, they're raping. And white what do you people mean you're are not doing sure? that too. People in every no, no, no. persuasion Why are, are doing that. the blacks treat each other? If they claim I, they want justice, right, mm -hmm. from the white man, why don't they start by treating themselves and others in their own race better? Be that an example that, of what they want. Okay. So in my experience growing up in Los Angeles, um, Let's talk about the gangs. The gangs started, and my father was telling me about the history of the gangs because he grew up here too. Um, the gangs were first started to defend the black community against outside gangs that were coming in from other communities to beat up um, black people. Um, they morphed into something, and, and also the, the men, the, the guys that started the gangs, they had nuclear families. 
Tookie Williams and those guys, their parents were married. It wasn't a single parent, like they blame the single parent. That happened later with all this incarceration. They've taken all the black men out of the community. And you if were talking you about the South. I um, pulled the policy map when I was taking a course at Harvard, and in the zip code of 90011, which is where I grew up, that's where I was born, um, I looked in 2018 to see what was the annual salary of a black male, 30 years old. It was $6,500 a year. And yet you they were better off then than they are today. No, they weren't. Because the point is they, that they, they had... They weren't begging and blaming and asking for reparations and affirmative action back That's in those what started days the homelessness. as they are today. That's what started the huge blossoming of homelessness we for black no males. We had no homelessness back then. 2018, we had homelessness. No, not in Alabama. We had it here in Los Angeles. Right, because the blacks were up here begging. They weren't begging. They had criminal felonies against them and couldn't get a job. They because couldn't they live were in drug housing. Addicts. They might have been drug addicts. No, not or might have been. They were drug addicts and they were still in and carrying on. We call on. it self-medicating because when you get to a point of hopelessness, what else can you do? What? Yes. You can forgive and come back to peace. Yes, because but if anyone you can't that get has a job, anger is evil. Evil is of their father, the devil. If you can't get a job, how are you going to come back to peace? Good question. Create your own job. Well, that's what we're trying to teach Why people do the to do. blacks think that white people are superior to them? I always hear them calling white people white supremacy or something like that. You heard them. I don't think they... Why I think do that's they a think mis- that white people are superior to them, that they're constantly reminding white people that they are superior? You are superior to me. You're supremacy. Why do blacks believe that white people are superior to them. I think the term white supremacy is more about how the person who's white is feeling as opposed to how the person who's black is feeling. Well, white people don't feel that way. It's the blacks feel that way about white. You never hear white people say I'm superior to you, but you always hear the blacks say you are superior to me. Um, Why do the blacks always say that about the whites? I don't think that's true. No, it is true. No, I think when they use the term white supremacist, they're talking about white privilege and it has nothing to do with them feeling that white people are superior. Well, why do they say it all the time then? I don't know that because they do say it all the time. Because if white people were superior to the black, they'll throw them out of this country. Well, they've tried several times no, to do that. No, if they were superior, they would... Putting them in jail is akin to throwing them out of this country. Putting mass incarceration is a type of segregation and taking people out of the population that is akin to throwing them out of the country. What is it like... So when you become, if you become judge and when you become, let's say you are a criminal, mm-hmm. you going to let the blacks out of jail? No, I'm not. <laughs> what the? I will not. You won't let them out? No, what I but will do is resentence them. But you think the white man them. put them in there, why won't you let them out? I would apply the sentencing rules. There's 20,000 people waiting to be resentenced based on the fact that they were given harsh sentences that we disagree You're with. You're going to let them out? I'll resentence them. See, I don't like that. Let them do their time that they already been sentenced and they want to see if that helped them. And if they get out, they won't go back. No, they're not ever getting out. These people are getting 20 to 5 to life. They're getting 40 years for crimes. Crimes where no one was hurt, killed, injured, raped, murdered. But they still have to suffer the consequences. Why should they be 40 40 years to life? They committed a crime. Maybe they didn't. They can't decide how long you're going to lock me up. Yes, they can. So they can commit the crime... And then they can say how long you're going to lock me up. No, no, we have sentencing guidelines. Uh, um, Are you for defunding the police? Am I? No. But the issue of defunding the police was misunderstood. Meaning what? It meant to give money to people like, for instance, if you called and somebody had a mental health issue, right? They would call the police and they might respond in an inappropriate manner because they're not used to dealing with people that have a psychosis. Um, we were supposed to put that money into what they called pet teams. But if you call 911 now and you say that my son or daughter is having an episode and I can't control them, I need you guys to come and get them and take them to a mental health facility, um, your child might end up dead because the LAPD is going to respond. They're going to respond with force. They, that's the only way well, they know how. would the LAPD have to do that if the black didn't threaten them and curse them no, out? No, no, this and, isn't where they're being threatened. Like they have guns and they don't follow the orders. This is not the where they're being threatened. Would the police have to be as concerned about his life if the black didn't act out like that? I think those are misnomer, and I think no, that I've makes people... No, I've seen it. 
There's it's also, not a misnomer. I've seen people get their children but get I'm asking killed you if because the blast didn't act out, would the cop have to worry about his life? Because he don't know if you have a gun on you, a knife, or what you're going to do. If the blacks just act like they have some sense, mm -hmm. would the cop have to take action like that? I disagree with that. Um, that was a question. Okay. So the rule now is that the cop has to have a... Uh, has to have good cause to shoot someone. They can't just shoot them because they were subjectively, I'm scared. But I'm asking if the, the black were to just follow the order of the cops, Who says would they the didn't? cops have to I've seen a lot of times where people have followed the orders and they still got shot. And they did something to bring it on. The cops didn't just say, oh, this person following the order, let me shoot him. Look at what happened in the George Floyd case. You saw that from beginning to end. Where is George end. now? He's dead. I rest my case. Well, what did he do? to deserve to be dead. According to all the reports, he was a drug addict. He wasn't following instructions. He'd been but in I, jail before. But did you watch it? If the cops had, had, if he had followed the orders of the cop according to all the reports, <laughs> no, that's George not true. might would be alive today. That's not true. They showed the whole video. No, they didn't. That guy was not supposed they to even be there. They did not They chopped it up. No. But I want to go no. back because of time. Mm -hmm. You claim that black women judges in Los Angeles County Court suffers from discrimination. W give me an example I, of why you believe that. I didn't say they suffer from discrimination. What I was saying, there's not enough of them so based on the population. It? I didn't say they suffer from discrimination. I didn't use that terminology. What did you say? What I said was there's about 400 judges in L.A. County, and of those judges, about 8% are black, and of those, less than half of those are female. I didn't Thank say anything God. about discrimination. But... Um, are women strong? Oh, yeah. So if women are strong, why are they always complaining like the blacks? Mm, black women are strong. If they're strong, People why are they always like complaining? People don't like our voice. That's what the problem. They don't like a strong black woman. Well, they always complain. I'm a strong black woman. How's don't that treat complaining? me that way. I'm a strong. You don't <laughs> talk to a black woman. I'm a queen. Yeah. <laughs> if, <laughs> that's not complaining. If they're strong, why do they have to remind us of it? Because uh -huh. maybe we're not being treated the way we should. How you should be treated? As queens. Queen? Yes. Of the devil? No. <laughs> you are that devil stuff. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of queen? Um, They're not queens of God. Well, like Why do you want to be Buddhist? treated like a queen? That doesn't make sense. That's Black a ruler. women are not queens. All the hell in them. No. Oh, Yeah. So you don't like black women? I love black women. That's why I'm trying to help them. Well, why? You think it's helpful to say that they're angry and that they're um, evil? Yeah. So that they are realize, and I counsel with black women all the time mm -hmm. from around the world. Mm -hmm. And we have meetings here for women only, for men only, and everything. Mm -hmm. And these black women are realizing, you know what? I am full of hell. I'm angry. I hate my kid's father. I did turn my children away from their father because of my anger. I hate my mother. My mother imposed her will on me, and I did the same thing to my children. Now, most people are not going to admit that, but there are black women who are starting to admit, admit that. And when they admit it, they forgive their mothers, and they forgive their fathers, and their life changed. The anger is taken away from them, mm -hmm. and they realize that it would another day. It would never... <laughs> It was never racism, but it was the anger that came from their mothers, and it goes on from generation mm -hmm. to generation. But the black leadership and the liberal whites, they lie to the blacks and tell them it's slavery, it's this and that, because they need to use the black to be destructive. Isn't that true? I think they do lie to black people yeah. and they, so that they can use them to destroy their own selves. And that's the reason why I set up Dixon Recovery Institute to help people with substance abuse problems. But what I found when I started that was I believe in the power of restorative justice. I had proposed a fathering court, just like for the very reason that you were talking about. Fathers need to be more involved. And yeah. even if they have been incarcerated, if they come back, they need to um, understand what it is to be a father and then to start to become, you know, involved in their children's lives. I think it's very important that both parents be involved. They need the father. The women need the father to help them, lead them how to raise the children. And they, the father needs to stand between the mother and the children so the mother doesn't pass her anger on to the children. So it's really needed. The, all people, mm -hmm. all human beings, 
the blacks are suffering because they're yearning for the father, not because of they need a better job or they need a white man to do this or they need that. They need to return to the father by overcoming the anger for giving their mothers. I know so many cases where the, mother, the black mothers are jealous of the man's wife, his woman. She's always in the middle of that. She ought to be Wait the wife. Minute. The black mother is... Jealous of her son's wife. Oh, okay. Or, or his girlfriend. Mm -hmm. You gonna put her before me? I'm like, what the... Well, you know she what? wanna be his wife. <laughs> being, being the mother of a son, who, a black man, the thing is, and my mother experiences too, they always say that um, a, a daughter you'll have all your life, but a son you have until he takes a wife. And that's and that's in everybody. Of that. well, that's in all communities. But it's because evil. It's not You're evil. You're right. It is it's all, all women are like even, that. Even in the white community, Hispanic, whatever, the um, once the um, the man gets married, then he ends up gravitating towards the woman's uh, family because, like I said, the the, the woman is going to gravitate towards her family and her mother, and so he's going to go that way. But he should take his wife away from her family and his family. Because if not, the mother will destroy the marriage. On her side, too. And quiet as it kept... No, I think we need community. So I don't think that either party should be taken if away. If not, the mother's going to destroy it. Because she's jealous. I don't agree. Why not? I think... I, I think that's an extreme position that you're taking. It's, it's true. And all the I way things are going to get you better. You know what? I think it's misogynistic. I do not agree with it. I, I really don't. What? That women are evil, that women are going to turn people They do people it every against. day. No. Yes. Well, not me, so I don't understand You don't have that. any children? I have a son. Oh, God. Yeah. And how old is he? He's 29. Let him go. <laughs> He's gone. He's out. Well, don't have him I calling have... you every day. No, he doesn't and call And don't you be calling day. him every day. I don't. Hi, baby. This is mama. I don't. And don't call him baby. I don't call him baby. Nice. He's a six grown foot man. five. He's huge. I don't call him baby. When you call him baby, he feel like a baby. No, I don't call him baby. Nice. No. Well, you need to make sure you teach that in your courtroom. I do. I will. Nice. One other question about this woman thing. Do you agree with me that the God above is the man's God and the God below is the woman's God? No, I don't. I definitely don't. Well, how did the woman become so evil? I if don't she agree did, with that through premise. Eve, through Eve, she took on the devil's nature. And the daughters of Eve, of the same been passed down. How did she become so evil if it wasn't that way? Well, so I, I don't know if you're even describing the Ju Judeo-Christian ethic the way, I mean, I don't even think that is a correct It's all about regenesis. But I'm, um, I'm a Buddhist. It's in Genesis. And I don't believe that. What? I don't believe that whole evil and the, un, the un, I don't believe any of that Do you, you just said. Do you believe evil is this? Do I believe evil exists? I think there are negative forces in the universe. I think there are things that are negative, but I think that they're juxtaposed by the positive, and I think there's, you know, you have to try to get this balance between Do them. You, so you don't believe evil exists? I believe in the yin and the yang. Remember, the there's a little speck of... Are those Chinese people? <laughs> it's not just uh, Chinese, but... A yin and a yang? <laughs> it is, yes. That's the Chinese people? <laughs> it's not just Chinese people. <laughs> Are they na are their names are Yin, Yang, Ho, Mo. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, um, I'm not trying to alienate all the other different populations. <laughs> but you say Yin um, and Yang, I know their names are like that. Um, but I think I met a Yi the other day when I went to a restaurant. Oh gosh. No, it doesn't have to do with that. <laughs> it has to do with the concept that everything is not linear, that, it's, that there is a little bit, there's, it's not a cut and dried line. I mean, even in what you would consider evil, there's a speck of good and whatever you would consider, um, you know, positive, there's a little speck of bad. So I mean, you don't believe that evil is this? Not in that biblical sense, no. But do you believe it as this period? Even though it might not be in that biblical I, I, Well, what believe, I said was like negative forces in the universe. There's negative things that happen. Do you believe yes. you have evil in you? I believe that all of the things in the environment are contained in 
in everyone. So yes. do you believe you have evil spirits in you? I don't believe that I'd have any evil spirits. I'm sorry? I don't believe I have any evil spirits in Man, me. Man, what makes you think the way you think at times? We have those bad thoughts and when you get lonely thoughts or depressed thoughts or angry thoughts, is that you making yourself feel that way or is that an evil spirit in your mind making you feel that way? Think I, that way. I don't think it's an evil spirit. I think um, things ebb and flow. Do you make, so do you make yourself think that way? Yeah, I think we do. You make yourself think evil thoughts to make yourself depressed. No, but I think You make yourself do. have evil thoughts to make yourself lonely. No. You make yourself and have how, evil thoughts to make yourself Why angry. Why is it that an evil thought makes you lonely or depressed? It could is it be good just, to be lonely? Sometimes it's good to give your own counsel. Is it good to be lonely? The, the, okay, so being alone and lonely is two different things. Just because I'm alone you be doesn't mean by yourself, but that doesn't mean you're lonely. Just because I'm alone doesn't mean I'm lonely. Mm -hmm. um, so when what makes you think that if it's you, if you don't believe evil exists, what makes you afraid at times? Do you make yourself afraid with those thoughts? I'm not afraid of things that that don't exist. But you have fear in you, though. And you do uh, experience fear at times. What causes does that if it's not the thoughts? Things that are happening. Like if somebody pulls a gun out, no, I'm not I'm talking about practical fear. The fear that in you in the morning when you wake up. Oh, I don't have that. You do? No, I don't. What What makes you have negative thoughts at times? I think sometimes people worry. But what makes you worry? Mm, I think there's a conditioning that people have being in this society. Once I um. I once read that there's more ways to say I've had a bad day in the English language than in any, any other language on the planet. Right. The best Actually, way to say I had an evil day. <laughs> I think you say that a lot. Everyone should. <laughs> I don't think uh, so. Do you create your own thoughts? That's a good one. You know, Buddhism and meditation is all about watching the mind and, and watching the thoughts and then working on kind of recreating those thoughts or channeling those thoughts in the way that you want them to be, focusing them the way that you want them. And do you create be. your own thoughts? Yeah, I guess you do. And how do you create an evil thought? So in Buddhism, we would say that we create, but sometimes we subconsciously create. In other words, we don't intentionally. So what you do is you intentionally, that's what the focus of chanting and meditation is, is to intentionally think and focus on what you want to focus on as opposed to having random thoughts and random things, um, you know, coming it, through. Is it possible that those thoughts are coming from your evil imagination and that's why God said we have to overcome the imagination because the imagination is wicked? I, think, have you I don't how, think God said that. Yeah, he said bring every thought into captivity and that those thoughts are not mine and they're not yours. I think my that might be a mistranslation. A, my voice is a quiet, a voiceless voice. Satan talked to you. He made you feel good. Then he made you feel bad. Then he made you feel good. Then he made you feel bad. And that's why you want to jump off a bridge somewhere, because you've been controlled by evil, but you think it's you. You're not your thoughts. All thoughts are all lies all the time about anything except for practical thoughts. You want to run for uh, L.A. court supervisor, right? Judge. That's a practical thought. But... All those other thoughts, you're having are evil. What other thoughts? That make you feel a certain way, think a certain way, believe lies, and make you up and down emotionally and stuff like that. But if you overcome them, you can be free from them because they're evil spirits I, in your body and emotions. I feel like I've overcome. I Not all of that. them, you still get angry. I don't. You you're said trying you did. to make me angry, but I'm not. You can't make you angry if it's not in you. You're trying to poke me and make me angry, but I'm not. Why do you say that? Because you keep saying the same thing over and over again. Like what, for example? This thing about these evil thoughts and about women having evil thoughts. Women, and women are evil. Being e I know, you keep saying that. Why are they so violent? I don't know that that's true. Ask any man. They, they smack men, they cut you out, they take you to court, take your children, and make the children <laughs> suffer because they hate the man. They always whining, oh, the queen, you got to talk to me a certain way. Why are they so violent? I and then more women file I, for divorce nowadays than men. Why are women so violent? And why do people want to ignore that? I could say the other way around. No, I've been about in the, the domestic, women first. I've been in the domestic violence court, and for the most part, it's 
male violence against women and not the other way around. But you believe the woman, the woman is lying. Women no, don't make up lies just like that. No, she's not. And she'll cry, oh, he beat me, and she'll be lying. No. Yeah. <laughs> no. Women are more violent than men. No, yeah. I don't agree. Because of the hell in her. I don't agree with that. Okay. Amazing. I don't. Do you love white people? I love all people. Do you love white people? I love all people. Do you love white people? I can't say that I just blanketly love somebody if I don't know them. Do you love white people? I'm not going to keep on going through this. I answered the question. Oh, you answered the question? Yeah. I love all people. How about, I, I didn't ask about all, I asked about white. I mean, everybody, there's some people that are lovable and some people that are unlovable in every um, persuasion. But Buddha teaches you to love all people. I do. It doesn't tell you to love some people or some people. You're yeah. right. It didn't even tell you to love your enemy. So do you they love do. white people? <laughs> sure. I mean, how you can I not love white people? You better take a drink of water after that lie. Sure. <laughs> now you you gotta... made me spit out my water. <laughs> <laughs> That's a hard one to swallow, huh? <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, no. So, listen, I got to put you on the hot seat. You haven't already been putting me on the hot seat? No. Oh, okay. Amazing. Yeah. So, here's what I want you to do, do what you want. But I want you to encourage the blacks to forgive their mothers. Of and course. return to their father. Forgive their father for not protecting you from their mother because the father would. Because he had not forgiven his mother, he was attracted to what he'd hate. And all men are hate their mother, so every woman they get involved with is the spirit of the mother. But if they forgive their mother, mother, I'm sorry for resenting you. I realize you couldn't help yourself. And I'm sorry for resenting you. And God will forgive them. But don't ask anyone, ever ask a person to forgive you. You forgive them. Because women do not forgive. You notice that? I, I don't agree with that. Women do not forgive. Your mama ain't going to forgive. Your wife, your girlfriend, women do not forgive. They'll I blame don't agree with everybody, that. they'll accuse, but they will not forgive. Have you noticed that? There's a Buddhist goddess called Kuan Yin, the goddess of compassion, and all she does is forgive. I bet she does. That's all she does. She I forgives. She, she hears does. the cries of the world and she has mercy on Let it. Let me talk to her. You can't. <laughs> Kuan Yin, the goddess of compassion. Where Look is she? Up. She has mercy for all. People in the we're, world, women especially ain't got her mercy children. For nobody. Oh but my where, goodness! Where you, is you, she? You really had some bad experiences. No, where is she? You've had some bad experiences where, with women, haven't where you? Where is she? Kuan Yin is a is a is a goddess. It's a. But where does she a, live? I want to talk to her. <laughs> it is a concept, just like your concept oh, it's of a concept? evil, and yes. Oh, it's not even real. The concept of evil isn't real. Really. Really. Amazing. Can't we talk about the judgeship a little bit? Absolutely. I'm, I'm not, we're going to close out with that. Okay. I, def, I <laughs> asked you why should I vote for a woman knowing that women were not created to lead. Why would I? I'm glad you brought that up. Knowing that women were created to follow and not to lead. God and Christ, Christ over man, man over woman, and woman over children. Knowing that women were created to follow, why would I vote for her and put her in leadership role when she's not even supposed to be the head of the family. Why would I vote for a judge, female judge, knowing she wasn't created to lead? Well, first of all, I think the premise is flawed. I think women are created to lead. But that's not difficult. You think it'll make it true. It is true. Why? It's true for me. You have your own truth and I have my truth. I don't have a truth. But why? Why should I, knowing should that vote women... Because women have compassion and women will be more part impartial. They'll be fair. They'll be compassionate. But that's the problem. They're going to vote in. They're going to be supporting drag queens, drag genders, and all kinds of stuff. Actually, the law says that you have to treat people equally, and you can't make a distinction between people, whatever gender they want to be. At are this you point okay in time, you have to ask people off? what they want to be called. Like if are you okay with them cutting off kids' body parts? No, I um, don't agree with that. What I do agree with is when, if they become an adult and they still feel the same way, right. then they can do that on their own. That's but right. I, as a mother, I or as a, I would not support another person um, making that decision because I don't think that they're. Um, I had a personal experience with this with a friend of mine's daughter 
who wanted to be transgender and um, the father wanted to support that and give her the surgery and everything what a beta. at the age of 13. He a beta. And was he a beta the, male? I don't know, but when the when the child became 18, the child changed their mind and had they gone through with that surgery, um, it would have been a mistake yeah. because it's irreversible. Because I don't think people realize that the human nature is evil and that it's, 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 there's no love in it. I do not it. agree with that. That human nature is evil? No, I don't. Then why do people be treat each other this way? I think that's through due to ignorance. No, that's evil. When you know better, you do better. When no, I had you my, overcome evil. When I had my substance abuse clinic, a lot of times people were in this state of unconsciousness where they were making a lot of mistakes. And I used to tell them, look, the bad news is the decisions you made up until this point are what got you here. But the good news is the decisions you make from this point forward are going to take you out. Because once you know better, you can do better. And what we do is educate to elevate. Right. So people, once they did, and a lot of people that I worked with recovered, they ended up... But they didn't make that decision to do drugs. They didn't make that decision to rob the bank. They didn't make that decision about... We don't make decisions we're influenced by evil or we're influenced by good. Once you overcome evil... You're now influenced by good. Human being has never, cannot, will not make one decision. We don't make decisions. Well, I don't think that's true. Yeah, I think that was no. the whole thing about free will. No such thing. But I think the, the issue is whether you make these decisions consciously with an intention to do good or evil. You have to actually consciously make that decision. I know, but if you're conscious, you don't make decisions. They're made on your behalf. If you're unconscious when... You think you're making a decision. Those decisions are made on your, your behalf, too, by evil. But you think if you making those decisions. That's why they never work out. That good because and evil thing, that's just uh Pray on I it. Can't. I, I, Buddha, I Buddha don't on pray. it. <laughs> don't pray. <laughs> Buddha on it. All right? So I got to put you on the hot seat. <laughs> okay. I need you to ask these questions as quickly as possible. Okay. The hot seat. What's a woman? What is a woman? What is a woman? Okay. Um, it, it's, a, it's really a concept, actually. There's a genetic concept to it, but there's also some other concepts like compassion and love and nurturing. Women have children. Women raise children. Amazing. Amazing. Is America the best country on this side of heaven? Is again? America the best country on this side of heaven? Um, I mean, I like America, but I've traveled quite a bit, and I do, I like other places as well. No, the question is, is America the best country on this side of heaven? Ah, that's a good question. Um, I don't know what about the? heaven. What? I don't know about heaven. I haven't been to it. No, is America the best country on this side of heaven? <laughs> this side of heaven. Um... I think with all its flaws, it's, I mean, it's, it's, you know, of course I'm patriotic. I think America is the best country, but there are other countries that have things to offer. Is America the best country on this side of heaven? I don't agree with the heaven concept, so I can't On this say. side of heaven, not heaven itself. Heaven is better. But is America the best country on this side of heaven? I don't know any different, so I guess I would say yes. I'm sorry? I don't know what heaven is like. I asked you about heaven. Is America the best country on this side of heaven? Well, how would I know if I didn't know if I hadn't gone to heaven? Do we need more white babies? No. I'm sorry? <laughs> no, we need more <laughs> black babies. <laughs> we have enough of them in the population. <laughs> Was it a mistake to give women the right to vote? Not at all. Uh, is it wrong for a black man to love the Confederate flag? I would have to say yes. Do you say yes? I would say yes, it's wrong because of it what it stands for. Do you love the great white hope? I don't even know what the great white hope is. It's not a what, it's a he. Oh my goodness. I mean, back in the day they said, what was it, that boxer was right. the great white Everybody hope? Everybody know about that guy. Yeah. But do you love the great white hope of today? No. You know who he is? I don't even know what it is. Donald Trump. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Do you oh. love the great white hope? You know, um, as a judge, I cannot oh, allow yeah. you to get into my, you know, partisanship, but whether I'm Democratic or Republican. Don't be trying to lock him up. 
trying to lock him up. If you become judge. <laughs> well, you know, I think black women are the bait of his existence because it appears that black women are the ones trying to lock him up. Because they're so evil. No, they're not evil. They ain't good. They're trying to get him to There's do a bear the right shit thing. in the woods. Oh, my God. I would suppose so. I don't Is know. the climate change real? I do believe it's real. Uh, should we give blacks reparations? I believe they should have reparations. Uh, I'm sorry? I believe we should. You believe we should give the blacks reparations? I do believe so. When will they start begging? I don't think they're begging. Well, I they think are. they're starting way behind the eight ball right now. But they haven't even earned it. I believe they have earned it. They built this country from the ground up. They were paid. They weren't paid. That's the whole point of slavery. <laughs> they no had payment. homes. They had places to live, food, shelter. And they took it away. And they had sex with the white people. That's because the white people wanted to. <laughs> I rest my case. Uh, sure, sure. Oh, I asked that. Uh, I asked about the chicken. Does the chicken have lips? Oh, my God. What does it have to do with the price of rice in China? Thank you. Does the chicken have lips? I think they do. Uh, if you, true or false, if you can ha, you can hear. I don't know what that means. True or false, sending your kids to a public school is child abuse. You know what, I think that's true actually. What is a man? <sighs> hmm. I think, as I said with the woman, it's a construct. I mean, it's a biological designation, but there's also some other connotations. I mean, I know you would want to say he's the breadwinner, he's the leader, he's the husband. How do you know that when I said Because you've said it throughout this whole conversation. What the? Uh, yeah. So what is a man? <laughs> a man is, well, he has certain anatomy that makes him a man. And he's strong, and he's courageous, and faithful, hopefully. Do you support abortion? That's a good one. You remember, I can't oh, yeah. let you know yeah. how I would rule if I were a judge. Amazing. Right. So I can't allow you to, I can't indicate how I feel about certain things. Did you have fun? I had fun. Amazing. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you. So here's what I want you to do. Tell the folks you're running for your L.A. Supreme Court judge okay. what they could do to help you, how to get your information, what to do. Okay. And, and why you're running. Mm -hmm. So my name is Rhonda Dixon. I'm running for Los Angeles Superior Court judge, seat number 39. Um, vote for me. I'm going to be fair, compassionate, and just. I want to level the playing field and balance things out. There is um, a lot of injustices that are happening, and the fact that we have mostly prosecutors as judges when we should have people from all walks of life, we should have criminal defense lawyers as well as civil litigators, um, different, different lived experience. Um, people don't realize that the judges are going to be put on whatever bench they're needed. So. When there's all prosecutors and they're in the family law court, they're in the landlord tenant court, they're in the civil court, they don't have any experience in those courts. That's why we have a lot of appeals. So I am a judge, I would be a judge that has that breadth of experience where I could be put in any bench and I would know the law and I would have a good idea of what's going on. Plus, who likes to go to court? You want a judge that you can relate to, a judge that's been on your side of the bench as well as on the other side of the bench. Somebody that is not going to be intimidating, going to um, tell, um, basically tell you off, be sarcastic, be rude and disrespectful, and threaten to have you put in jail just because you want to speak. No, that's not why we have judges. We have judges to help us resolve our conflicts peacefully. We have judges to respect us. We pay the judges' salaries, and judges should be respectful and help us to resolve our conflicts peacefully. So let me just ask real fast. So you're going to be on the ballot and we're going to have to vote or not whether we want? Anything? Yes. Oh, okay. I have four people that are in my seat. Uh, the other three people are um, Jacob Lee, George Turner, and Steve Napolitano. Oh, okay. And I am the only one that is a female okay. and as well being more balanced because I've had a breadth of life experience. Well, amazing. Well, I wish you well with that. And how can the people get your website or whatever? They can go to Rhonda Dixon for the number four judge.com. Oh, and Rhonda is spelled R O N D A, 
D-I-X-O-N, the number four, then judge, J-U-D-G-E dot com. Amazing. Well, I wish you well with that. Thank you. And thank you all for tuning in. I absolutely appreciate it. Don't forget to support The Fallen State at thefallenstate.tv slash donate. And uh, locals.com in the description there, right? Locals.com. Uh, like, follow, ring the bell, check out the merch, subscribe, and all that good stuff. Thank you all for tuning in. I appreciate it. Thank you again, Rodney. Thank you for I wish having you well. Me. Thank you. Amazing. Amazing.